oftentimes in studying ecology, we talk about populations, um, and we look at how populations change over time. So let's say we're that you are studying a population of rabbits, um, and remember, population is a group of individuals of the same species living in the same place at the same time. So study a population of rabbits that are living in um, Harold Parker this summer, because we're almost to summer now. Now, there are four factors that can change um, the size of that population. So we'll talk about each of those, but the four factors are the number of births, so the birth rate, the number of deaths, or the death rate, and then migration. There are two types of migrations. There's immigration, with an I, and then emigration, with an E. Immigration, with the I, is moving into a population. So think about immigrants. If you've been studying maybe immigrants um, to America in your history classes this year. Emigration with an E, exit. Right? So that's when an individual leave an area. So let's look at how these four factors, births, deaths, immigrations, and emigrations, but they're both a type of migration, um, can change a population size. So let's say with our rabbit population, we have this information. So in one year, there were 20 births, 17 deaths, 5 immigrants, and 10 emigrants from our population of rabbits in Harold Parker. So if we want to figure out the change in the population size, we just do some very simple math, which you can probably figure out right now. Okay. Now, births are going to increase a population, deaths will decrease a population, immigrants moving into an area will increase, emigrants will decrease. So to figure out the change in population size, we take the number of births plus the number, uh, number of immigrants, and then we subtract from that the number of deaths and the number of emigrants. So in this example, we would say 20 plus 5, okay, so that's our number of births, and then immigration, minus 17 plus 10. So that's 25 minus 27. So that gives us a value of negative 2. So that means during that year, the population decreased by two rabbits. Okay. I want you to think about a population of something like bacteria that can reproduce asexually and very quickly. So we might start off with one single bacterium, and then an hour later, we now have two bacteria because they've each divided. An hour after that we have four, and then pretty soon we have eight, and then we have 16, then we have 32. You get the point, I'm not gonna keep going, but it would just keep doubling and doubling and doubling and doubling. Okay? This is called exponential growth, and it can be seen in this chart to the right. Exponential growth occurs when basically a population is just growing as quickly as it can. So the birth rate's really high. We're not thinking about migration patterns right now. Um, we don't typically see exponential growth in populations though. Even bacteria eventually um, their population levels up. And the reason for that is because we have what are called limiting factors. And limiting factors are all of the, they can be both abiotic and biotic, so living, so non-living and living things in um, an environment within an ecosystem that um, prevent a population from continuing to grow. 
So for our bacteria, it could be eventually they run out of space, which would be an abiotic factor. They could run out of the food source, which would be a biotic factor. So these limiting factors are really important. So this graph, which we can see here, shows what tends to happen with a population. This is known as logistic growth. And what's happening here, okay, you can see the red line, um, where we have the population growing rapidly, but then it begins to slow down, and then the blue line is slowing down until the growth rate, so the change in the population, actually ends up being about zero. Okay. This imaginary line, which we can see right here, where the population kind of maxes out, that's known as the population's carrying capacity. And a carrying capacity is the maximum number of individuals within a population that an area can support without the ecosystem being damaged. What we can see here in this graph is the, well, the blue line right here kind of represents the idealized logistic growth fast, rapid, exponential growth, and then the growth rate slows down, and then levels out right at the carrying capacity. That doesn't actually happen in most situations, and so the purple line is showing what a typical um, population growth rate might look like. So let's say that we're dealing with a population that's in a new habitat, so there are lots of um, niches for these, this population to fill. Um, so it grows very rapidly. We get right here a little bit of overshoot, so the population goes above the carrying capacity. So then it actually drops down a little bit, and then it fluctuates. If it goes too high above the carrying capacity, okay, limiting factors will cause the population to drop. When it's below the carrying capacity, it can be a little bit higher. Um, this visual over on the right is kind of a good way of showing um, the different things that can maintain a population at its carrying capacity. So if you think that you have a big barrel underneath your gutter, okay, the annual production, right, this would be the number of births each year. But the number of births, no matter how many there are, only a certain number can be supported in that population, just like the barrel can only hold so much water. So water will overflow from the barrel or things like there will be starvation. If there's not enough food for all of the organisms, some will starve. There might be accidents. Pollution could reduce a population. Old age, some die. Disease, diseases are going to spread more easily if there are more individuals because they're in closer contact. Just think about in the winter, everybody gets sick because they're in close contact together. Predation, if there are more, um, if there's more prey, you're going to get more predators. So all of those result in population losses. So that's kind of just a nice visual to represent what happens with carrying capacity. So that is your introduction to populations.